apostolic band upon the Mount of Olive stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, and with his faithful followers, the Lord ascend in majesty. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. To them the shining angels cry, Why stand and gaze upon the sky? Alleluia, Alleluia, this is the Savior, thus they say, this is his glorious triumph day. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah. You see him now ascending high up to the portals of the sky. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus you shall see returning in great majesty Alleluia 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 joy on earth, O Lord, and be our future great reward. Alleluia, Alleluia, then groaned with you forever we shall praise your name eternally. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. O risen Christ ascended Lord, all praise to you, let earth accord. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are while endless ages run with Father and with Spirit one. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. 
I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. was taken off into heaven. Be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever Amen. was taken off into Have mercy. 
mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. to God we give you thanks and praise of heavenly joy and earthly peace we sing to worship you to you our hearts we raise Lord God almighty Father heavenly peace Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son, you bore for us the Lord of this world, sin, O Lamb of God, your glorious victory won. Receive our prayer, grant us your peace within. Alone, O Christ, you only are the Lord. At God's right hand in majesty most high, with the Spirit worshipped and adored, with all the The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the ascension of our Lord is from 2 Kings chapter 2. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water. And the water was parted to the one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being, being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. 
and he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. And he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Now when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho saw him opposite them, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs appearing to them during forty days, and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be, will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom, of Isra kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. 
And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next reading. of triumph in his ears to his heavenly throne ascending as unvanquished all their fears Christ looks down upon his faithful leaving them in happy tears death destroys Life restoring, proven equal to our need. Now for us before the Father, as our brother intercede. Flesh that for our world was wounded, living for the wounded to our lives of want and wandering, send your spirit promised guide. Through our lives of fear and failure, with your power and love abide. Welcome us as you were welcome to an endless Easter time. Alleluia, alleluia, oh, to breathe the Spirit's grace. Alleluia, alleluia, oh, to see the Father's face. Alleluia, Alleluia, Lord, to The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. God. 
Ghost, ever present help in need, praised by all the heavenly host. He upholds. Your believing Jesus Christ, who loved God in very Son, who descended from his throne and for us salvation won. By whose cross and death we weep, rescued from all misery. We all confess the Holy Ghost, who from both in truth proceeds, who sustains and comforts us, in all trials, fears, and needs. Blessed Holy Trinity, praise forever be to Thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Beloved in the Lord, having opened their minds to understand the scriptures, Jesus led his disciples as far as Bethany, and with hands stretched over them in blessing, a blessing that never ends, the Savior of the world was received into heaven by a cloud. In modern times, the significance of ascension seems to be lost, yet we celebrate because Christ's ascension is good news for those who expect his return. With Christ's ascension, our humanity goes with him to be at the right hand of God. Therefore, our human nature now ascends above the nature of animals. Our humanity rises above the dignity of even the heavenly host, the angels. Passing the ranks of angels, our humanity goes above the heights of even the archangels, above the cherubim and seraphim. And as the son of Mary goes, so go the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve to be seated with Christ in his glory. Far above the realms of a broken creation, our human nature ascends with Christ, ceasing only at the seat of the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. There on the throne of his glory sits our human nature, united, united with the divine nature in the person of Jesus Christ. The ascension of Jesus is our elevation to the right hand of God. Wherever Jesus is, he is there in his flesh and blood whether it is in heaven, on earth, or under bread and wine. There is no separation of the divine and human in Christ. His body has not been abandoned to the grave. His divinity is not above its union with flesh and blood. God has exalted Christ Jesus, the Son of Mary, to the right hand of power, and with him is our nature. What Adam lost by eating the fruit of the wrong tree, namely the image of God and dominion over all creation, Jesus has restored and triumphantly seals with his ascension. For all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him given to him as a man, as flesh and blood, and as the Son of Mary, as the, also as the Son of God. Therefore, my dear friends, it is not with saddened hearts that we gather on this day. Jesus has not left us. He's not abandoned us to make our own way into heaven. 
It's quite the contrary. Because with great joy we sing to Jesus. We pray in the Spirit. We listen in faith. We feast on His flesh and His blood. And with all the saints and the martyrs who now enjoy the bliss of eternity with Him. Together we revel in the salvation that God has wrought. Brought us through the Son who has dominion at the right hand of God. And friends, such a salvation must be done for us. As the Savior says, thus it was written and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. These things were necessary to free a people held in the clutches of sin and death. Such is the lot of fallen humanity. Such is the curse of the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve. We are born slaves, slaves to sin, destined to death. Through the lies and temptations of the devil, humanity lost the joys of heaven. We lost our place before God in heaven. And as slaves to sin, humanity obeyed its master. It is a master that we are very much aware of. For we all have fallen prey to its deceit, trapped in its clutches since the conception that when we were born into the world that is captivated by sin. We have been selfish, lazy. We've been greedy. We've been uncaring. We've been, un we've been hateful. We've been hurtful. At times we demean our neighbor with our lips rudely voicing the depths of our heart, oftentimes without even realizing it. At other times, our silence has surrendered into death the dignity of our own human race, even the unborn. We've ignored God's word to the detriment, to our own detriment. We've heeded the voice of innumerable false prophets who know nothing of Christ and his salvation. We see the fruit of sin everywhere. Our families are easily broken. Our vocations are easily neglected. Sin has had its way with us and with those whom we love. Sin has even found a willing cohort in our members as well as a captive victim. We've sinned and we've been sinned against. Our humanity has fallen so far from God that we can do nothing about it. Apart from Christ Jesus, we are dead. We are dead in our sins and our trespasses. Apart from Jesus, all humanity is dead. For the wages of sin is death. Who will save us from this wretched body of death? Thanks be to God, Christ Jesus has come. He comes as a man fully human, fully flesh and blood. He bears the fullness of our humanity while also being the brightness of the glory of the Father and the very image of His person. He upholds all things by the word of His power. And when He Himself had purged us of our sin, He sat down at the right hand of God, not leaving us here in despair, but in confidence of His victory, in confidence of eternal life, that we have now gained through him. And all of this was necessary for us, for our salvation. If Christ is not fully flesh and blood, then humanity is not redeemed. If Christ is not God, then humanity is not raised from the dead. As the incarnate God, the God who made himself man, Jesus wins the victory. Not for himself alone, but for the entire human race. Everyone who bears flesh, who is a part of this nature. Because by his flesh and blood, brought into eternity, our flesh and blood is also redeemed. By his life, our life is restored. By his death, our death is vanquished. By his descent into hell, hell loses its power over everyone who believes. And by his resurrection comes our own resurrection. Sin, death, the devil, hell, 
All of these things were happy to imprison us, to hold us as its captive. But friends, these things have now been taken captive by Christ. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now our righteous Lord takes captive, takes our captivity under sin as his prisoner. He ascends into heaven as a mighty conqueror. He has seized and taken captive those that had taken us captive. He takes my captivity captive. He captures my executor. He throws out the transgressions that were my death sentence. He eradicates my mortality and he damns my accuser forever. He ascends to the Father's right hand with a spoil of war. Bound by the might of his death and resurrection given in the glory of his Father. And now he has given this victory to all who have been washed by his word with the water, promising to us that hell itself is decimated for all who are in Christ. By faith in Christ, we behold the exaltation of our humanity as we see it go to the glories of heaven as Jesus exalts us with him. Friends, where Jesus goes, we also go. We go free from sin. We go free from death. We go free from the devil. It is for freedom that Christ sets us free. So confident of our forgiveness, the forgiveness he grants for our sins because of his victory over death, we now live in his freedom. We do not persist in sin, but glory in the freedom of faith. For if you truly believe in Christ, you also believe that he ascended to heaven, that he has taken your sins captive. As scripture says now, your sins can no longer terrify you. And I think about a sermon that I heard recently after the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, rediscovering much of what Luther had written nearly 500 years ago ran across the Ascension Day sermon from 1534 where he preached to his congregation about the confidence that they should have as Christ's beloved children. When sin burdens our conscience, when the accusations against our righteousness come, Luther taught his flock to stand boldly against doubt, against the accusations, and have confidence. Confidence enough even to mock the enemy's power. He says, sin, your accusation means nothing to me. I believe in him who sits above at the right hand of the Father and has taken you captive. For this reason I know of no sin but that which has been taken prisoner and is already condemned and damned before God and will have its head chopped off at the end of the world. I know you like to drive me into depression, into despair, into foolhardiness, even into idolatry. But you have no claim on me. You have been taken captive. Your tyranny is done with and your dominion is at its end. Now you are the prisoner. I love this. You should love this. This confidence is for each of you, each of, all, each of us who have been glorified in Christ glorified in the Lord who meets with us this day with his peace, with the promise of the forgiveness of sins. The comfort and the confidence of the gospel, it's ours because we know that the glorified God, Jesus Christ, he's not departed from his church, but in his glory he now fills all things. He locates himself where his word puts him. He does this for the sake of us, for the sake of the church. Even now, he is with us. He remains with us by the power of his spirit who created the church, who continues to fill it with faith in God's word, to believe that our warfare with sin, and death, and hell, it's over because Christ is victorious. And we are confident that even though the devil would command us to believe otherwise, 
We hear the good news that Christ is risen, that he's ascended to heaven in order to fulfill the scriptures and to fill all places with his glory. But that he even fills this meal we prepare to share to go together with his own glorified body and blood to declare that good news once more, that our sin is removed. God's hostility against us has ceased. The word reminds us over and over. It teaches us that this is the victory feast of the Lamb of God. This is the feast of the God who reigns, the Lamb who has unlimited authority to make himself present, even here for us who are still on the battlefield. And I was thinking, speaking of battlefields, tomorrow marks 73 years since VE Day, when Germany capitulated to the Allied forces and fighting in Europe ceased. The jubilation across the Western world is still remembered as one of the most iconic parts of the 20th century. And there are still many pictures, well remembered, of people across our country parading and rejoicing in the fact that the hostility was coming to its end. Though there were still four months of fighting left to do in the East, people could finally begin to breathe a sigh of relief. They knew that the end of the turmoil was in sight. People knew that everywhere, soon, the bombs would stop falling at the night, the firefights were going to stop, finally order was going to return. But today, dear Christians, with Christ's ascension, we are rejoicing in a victory and in a peace that lasts forever. One that far surpasses any jubilation this world has ever seen or ever will see. The ascension was Christ's final proof that his word of peace to us was true and that it is for us that this body and soul he carries to the right hand of God. When Jesus ascends into heaven, he takes our flesh to the realms of endless glory. By rising to the right hand of God, he assures us of our place in eternity with God. He grants the church the comfort of knowing that, the, uh, that all hostilities will soon come to an end. The ruler who once so, had sown nothing but discord and strife, the ruler of this world, he's been thrown out. And now he reigns. He reigns here for his church, and he reigns with the omnipresence of God Almighty in bread and wine, bringing us faith, bringing us even optimism, knowing that the war among sinners, it's come to an end. So just as he ascended with clouds, he will return soon in the same way. We eat and drink Christ's meal, remembering that our flesh and soul have been joined to his. And in baptism, we are in him, and he is with us. We are even in the heavenly presence right now. So dearest friends, let us give thanks to the Lord at all times and in all places, knowing that the tribulation of these days is coming to an end. The victory has been won. The war is over. The Lord has sworn to be with us, the same Lord who sits even at the right hand of God. He will not change his mind. His ascension blessing as he reached out his hands and disappeared before the disciples, it remains an eternal blessing for us. It remains with us. He remains with us. Thanks be to God. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, you sent your only begotten Son into our world in order to rescue us from sin, death, and the devil. In his perfect life, sacrificial death, glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven. 
He fulfilled everything written about him in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and the Psalms, thus winning for us forgiveness, life, and salvation. Keep us, your baptized children, clothed in his holiness and righteousness as his beautiful and unblemished bride. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you for retaining among us your holy word and sacraments. Continue to raise up faithful stewards of your mysteries, that repentance and the forgiveness of sins in Christ's name would be proclaimed in our midst and throughout all the world. And prepare all your baptized children to be faithful confessors of the hope that is in them. Lord, in your mercy. In the midst of strife and conflict and wars and rumors of war, remind us that you have given all authority in heaven and earth to your Son, our ascended Lord. Call to faithfulness the leaders of the earth and bless those who govern. Thwart those who would hinder your reign among all peoples. Deliver us from greed, self-centeredness, and pride, and grant us a proper sense of priorities that we may seek those things which are above. Lord, in your mercy. On this day, as we celebrate your son's ascension into heaven, where he intercedes for us as our prophet, priest, and king, give us the confidence that whatever we ask in his name and according to his will shall be granted. Feed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation here at the holy altar, that our faith may be strengthened and our hope increased. Lord, in your mercy. You have not left us without comfort and hope. Consider our woes and fears. Be not far from us in our times of trial. Be with the lonely, the forsaken, the sick, the distressed, and homebound. Help us to be watchful and to be in prayer, longing for your Son's glorious return, when we too shall be resurrected to dwell body and soul in his kingdom which has no end. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is a truly good right and salutary. We should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection appeared openly to all his disciples, and in their sight was taken up into heaven, that he might make us partakers of his divine life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Take eat, true body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take eat, 
the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, drink, the true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you. Take, drink, the true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. You may depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus given for you. Amen. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Amen. And now may this precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take, eat the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat. The true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat. The true body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take, eat. The true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. And may the Lord, by his Holy Spirit, keep you in your baptismal faith to life everlasting. You may go in peace. Amen. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. You may depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat, the body of Christ. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. The true body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. You may depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Take, eat, the body of Christ, given to death for you. Take, eat, 
the body of Christ. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. And may the Lord, by his Holy Spirit, keep you in your faith to life everlasting. May go in peace. Amen. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you, the body of Christ. The Lord, by his Holy Spirit, keep you in your baptismal faith to life everlasting. Amen. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, May this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. You may depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. And may the Lord, by his Holy Spirit, keep you in your baptismal faith to life everlasting. You may go in peace. Amen. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat, the true body of Christ. this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. You may depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat, this is the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Take, eat, this is the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you. this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. You may depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take eat. This is the true body of Christ. May this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. May go in peace. Amen.
praise thee, bless thee, and adore thee, in thanksgiving bow before thee. For from the body and the blood didst nourish our thanks, souls that they may flourish. O Lord, have mercy. May thy body and her love may Constrain thee that thy blood should bless, sustain me all our debt thou hast paid. Peace with God once more is made. O Lord, have mercy. May God bestow on us his grace and favor, that we follow Christ our Savior, and live together in union, nor despise this blessed communion. O Lord, have mercy. and unity. O Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Acknowledge you, O God, to be the Lord, the Father everlasting, by all the earth adored. To you, all angel powers, cry aloud, the heavens sing, the cherubim and seraphim, their praises to you free. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, your 
Lord, majesty and glory fill the heavens and the earth. The band of the apostles in glory sing your praise. The fellowship of prophets their deathless voices raise. The martyrs of your kingdom are great and noble throng. Sing with the Holy Church throughout all the world this song. O oh, oh, majestic Father, your true and only Son, your Holy Spirit Comforter, forever three in one. You who Christ, our King of glory, the everlasting Son, Beside your glory were born a virgin's womb, were crucified for us, and were placed into a tomb. Then by your resurrection you won for us reprieve. You who opened heaven's kingdom to all who would believe. Who sit in splendid glory, enthroned at God's right hand, upholding earth and heaven, the voices you command. We know that you will come as our judge that final day. So help your servants you have redeemed by blood, we pray. May we with saints be numbered in praise and ever end. In glory everlasting, Amen, O Lord, Amen. Well, good morning to everyone. Uh, 